Look at that. Well, March 29, 2012. We're here with Charles LeBlanc. How are you today, Charles? Good, good. Aren't you Aren't you supposed to be in court right now? Yes, I'm supposed to be in court, but my uh, lawyers are uh, are uh, taking over the case. It's so nice to have uh, some people backing you up and saying uh, you don't need no legal aid. Uh, don't have to go to the approach and uh, find out, you know, uh, how to get legal represent, re re representation. So uh, I don't have to show up in court today. Excuse me, I'm a little paranoid because you see them here over there. So yes. Around, so it's making me a little bit uncomfortable. So that's the reason I'm stuttering. Understandable, Charles. So you were supposed to be in court at one o'clock today. One o'clock, uh, but uh, what happened is. Uh, we uh, paid the uh, $29 helmet infraction. Uh, there's a constable from the Fenton Police Force that singled me out and gave me a ticket for not wearing a helmet. I'm a former professional cyclist. I rode a 10 speed bike across Canada uh, in 1977. I went around the Maritimes in 1976 and I rode from Halifax to San Francisco. My God, they're all around the place. I know. I know. It's, it's just, every single one of them is working today. Yeah, I know. I wonder why. So all right, anyway, so, you, sorry, so you're supposed started. to be in court today at 1 o'clock and you were told not to show up. Your, no, lawyers, told... your lawyers decided to not have you show up. No, it's just not to have me show up. It's just that there's a lot of people to be a lot. See, I'm fortunate on the public favor. If I do something stupid, it'll be on the front page. There's a lot of people that's doing foolish things or <clears throat> not wearing a helmet. I'll say not foolish, but not wearing a helmet or anything. And their story will not see the light of day in court. Yes. In my case, the media will be there and the issue will come to light about the helmet and riding a bicycle on the sidewalk and the police single out people that they want to that they, they don't like just an excuse for an avenue to search them and if they find marijuana ooh, that just added to more charges so it's not right so today was it who who exactly paid the fine paid the fine it was a uh, anonymous donor that stepped forward the fine was twenty nine dollars and ninety five cents. So because the fine is paid, that issue is no longer. That issue is no longer going to be. Uh, it's, it will be an issue for myself, but we. It was connected to my raid when the Fenton Police Force raided my place. That I called a member of the Fenton Police Force a uh, bad name. Okay. So that ticket was connected to that one. So that's the reason that uh, we couldn't go around and show them all the details and testify and all that. We'll wait till the big one, which is, uh, I guess, uh, well, I was charged under the Criminal Code of Canada, Section 301, which is, uh, if you uh, libel, it gets a peace officer of the Fredericton, Fredericton Police Force. And that's a sentence of two years in jail, rarely used in Canada. And the Fredericton Police Force, with the prosecutor, uh, arrested me in that charge, but they haven't charged me yet. So we don't know what's going to happen. It's supposed to show up in court April the 20th. April when? April the 20th. April 20th. Okay, and that's for the hearing regarding libel. Libel. And they still haven't charged you yet? No. So, wow. <laughs> so how long has it been since they actually arrested uh, you for that? As a matter of fact, Three hours ago, it was exactly ten weeks ago that eight to ten members of the Fredericton Police Force raided my place at 145 West Bond Street. And you were arrested that day? I was arrested, handcuffed. How long were you held in, in custody? Jail, put in jail for six hours. And uh, no lawyers around. The less fortunate in the city are being singled out. They put you in jail, they arrest you, they say, hey, here's a lawyer, somebody to talk to you. The lawyer says, okay, don't say anything. Then they hang up. And then they put you in jail for an hour, an hour and a half, and then they get you out. Hey, buddy, how you doing? And then they let you sign things. If you already sign these papers, you'll be out of here in five, five minutes. If you had ADHD and if you're a smoker, <laughs> my God, you sign those papers. You'll sign anything. 
And one of the conditions is uh, not to allow to walk on feces. So then the cops get you, breach of probation, put you in jail for four or five months. And that's how they do it. The Ferguson police force are going against the less fortunate in this city. And we are in great, great danger. Great danger. Because police chief Barry Midnight made himself very clear that there is a double standard in this city. The rich will not get a ticket. I give them a ticket, I give them a picture and a video of politicians jaywalking. And uh, the chief won't give them a ticket. Me? Somebody seen me walk driving my bicycle on the sidewalk a week and a half ago. And the police gives me a ticket, 140 bucks. Fine. So they want to give them a ticket to the rich, but the poor, they give them a ticket. So there's a double standard here. I, I call it racism. Because the poor people say, well, you're, you're crazy. Uh, we know that. You've got to be crazy to do what I'm doing. But he says, uh, the race, the poor is not a race. I'm sick of hearing the word elitist, discrimination. I call it racism. It's racism against the poor, and that's the way it is. All right, well, we'll leave it there. Thank you, Charles. Yeah.